8.1 apply exponent properties involving products. So some key terms that we need to know is first the product of powers property and that says that if you have a to the m times a to the n meaning you have the same bases and you're multiplying exponents with the same bases you get a to the m plus n. Again, let me note the importance of the same bases. And remember when we were doing exponents before, we said that a to the m power, this was the base, and this is the exponent. So when I say the same bases, I mean that the base has to be the same. Only when you're multiplying with the same bases do you add the exponents. So in this example, when I have a 5 to the 6 times a 5 to the 3rd, my base is a 5 in both. So my answer is 5 to the 6 plus 3 or 5 to the 9th power. And you can just leave your answer like that. So again, in these examples, I have the same base. So I can add the exponents. When you're multiplying exponents with the same base, you add the exponents only when you're multiplying. So we have 7 to the 8th power. And you can just leave it like that. In this one, you might get confused. So I encourage you, if there's no exponent, that means it's to the first power, right? Just like if I just write x, it's 1x. I encourage you to write this little one up there. I call it an invisible one. So write your little invisible one so you don't forget to do 1 plus 8, which is 9 to the ninth power, and you just leave that. In this one, again, you don't see an exponent, so put your invisible 1. And so we keep our minus 5 in parentheses, and we have 1 plus 6. And that's it. Here with letters, since we have x's, the bases are the same, we just add the exponents. Oops, skip a step which is x to the seventh power. Another property is when we do a power to a power. So in this case I have a to the m and I raise that whole thing to the nth power. Then I just multiply, so I do m times n. As an example, 3 to the fourth and I want to square that whole thing, I just get 3 to the 4 times 2, I just multiply the powers, and I get 3 to the 8th power, and I'll just leave it like that. So here are some examples. I do 2 to the 5th to the 3rd power, so I multiply the exponents, or 2 to the 15th x squared to the fourth power, again I multiply the exponents and I get x to the eighth. In this one, my negative two is in parentheses, so I need to keep it in parentheses and then I multiply my exponents. And so I get negative two to the sixth power. So we're just multiplying the exponents. In this one, I have a to the 3 times 4, which is a to the 12th. Finally, if I do a product to a power, it means I have to raise each thing to the power. So a, b, in parentheses to the m power means you do a to the m times b to the m. a to the m times b to the m. So in this example here I would do 2 squared times 3 squared. The reason for this 
is, this is easier to show it like this. 2 times 3 squared means you're doing 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. Because that's what squared means. It means you're doing that times that again. And so you see that you have 2 squared times 3 squared. If I did 2 times 3 to the third power, it would mean you do 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3, because I had it to the third power. In other words, I would have had 2 times 2 times 2, 2 cubed, times 3 times 3 times 3, 3 cubed. And that's the same power property that I'm talking about, 2 to the third times 3 to the third. So let's just do some sample problems. 2 to the third times 3 to the third. I just did that problem. So here, I actually have three things. So I have to do 9 squared. You have to do each of them to the power. Times x squared times y squared. And I don't need to write the time sign in between. I can just write 9 squared x squared y squared. Now in this one, it's very important, okay, that I say this is the number negative 4. So I have to say, let's use the whole negative 4 and square it. And then let's do the x squared. And the reason I stress that, let me just tell you here, is because there's a big difference between negative 4 squared and negative 4 squared. And I know we talked about this in the beginning of the year, but let me just refresh your memory. This means negative 4 times negative 4. And a negative times a negative is a positive. However, this one is saying take the opposite of 4 squared. And so I take the opposite of 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, which is negative 16. So you see the difference between these two? And that's why it's so important that when I take my number part, I take the whole number part and the positive or the negative goes with the number all the time. So in this case, a negative 4 squared would be negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 4 squared x squared. You could also write 16x squared. I don't care which one you write. In this one, this is saying the opposite. Okay, so we do that last because you do parentheses first. So all I'm doing here is the number 4 squared. And I'm doing the x squared. So do you see the problem, the difference between this problem and this problem? We're going to be talking about this in class. Okay, they're different, but they're so tempting to think they're the same problem. Okay, let's use all the properties we've learned so far. So first thing we need to do is we need to do 2 squared, and then we do the x cubed squared. And I'm just writing all my steps, times x to the fourth. Okay, and now I want to get rid of the parentheses, so I have 2 squared times, and then when you do a power to a power, Remember, what do we do? Let's see, a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. So we're going to multiply. And so we get 2 squared times x to the 6th times x to the 4th. Now we have the same bases. Remember, we have the same bases means we add the exponents. And so we're left with 2 squared, why don't we just write 4x to the 10th power. And that is our final answer. And that's it for this lesson.